What are you proud of, but can't tell anyone who knows you? I played Neopets for one a too long and I eventually traded my way to a UC Grey Calgary with RN I created during a purge a few years ago. I was so happy that I was crying. Similar to what I was doing when I managed to create some epic purge names. And my roommate asked if I was okay. I couldn't manage to tell her why I was so happy. As a former Neopets employee, I think this is awesome. I'm a 31 year old straight male and I can dee the frick out of a banana. Like a whole banana. I'd like to brag but like, nah. You can brag to me. I won't judge. I'm really proud that I keep going. That I keep finding small, insignificant reasons to keep pushing through. Who would feed the dog? No one can cover my shift this weekend. My gaming buddy would never know what happened to me. It's too close to the holidays. It would ruin it for everyone. My best friend is really up on her luck lately. I can't tear her down. And it's hard. Every day feels worse and nothing is working. Everything keeps falling apart. And everyone expects me to be this happy-go-lucky person and how do you explain to them that you can't anymore? I feel like the biggest burden. But I'm proud that even through everything I can still have hope that it will get better. I can at least be proud of that. I went to an Overeaters Anonymous meeting last night. My first one. Actually, I was out for a drive trying to keep myself from binging when it occurred to me to see if there was a meeting that I could attend. I pulled over, looked it up, and there was one about 20 miles away. I'd be 10 minutes late but I decided to go anyways. I got there only 5 minutes late but stood around the corner from the meeting room for 15 minutes before I got the courage to walk in. I sat on a couch next to a gentleman old enough to be my grandfather and I was the youngest one in there by a couple of decades. I didn't speak except to say my name when the leader asked, and I kept welling up with tears and breaking down. I think it was so overwhelming to just be there, to have taken that first step, and it was unbelievable to me to hear stories of others who have a similar relationship with food. I've applied to the police academy of my nearby big city and have already passed the written test and the oral interview. I didn't think it was likely that I'd pass either one, especially the oral interview, but I did, and I'm scheduled to take the physical test in less than 3 months, and I want so badly to be in law enforcement. My eating habits are keeping me from my dream. So I went to my first OA meeting last night and it was harder than walking into that written test or the oral interview. Much scarier, but I freaking did it. I'm so happy I did. I know that feeling. Walking into my first AA meeting was the hardest thing I've ever done. I suppose I could have asked someone to go with me, but I did it alone. I was so upset I could barely speak, and I kept crying even though I didn't want to. One of the longest hours of my life. But, I'm 3.5 years sober today. It gets easier. Also better. My DND campaign. My family don't really care. It's not their fault. They just don't understand anything about it. I've just started a new job and I don't think I'm ready to drop that nerd bomb on them. And everyone else in my life are my friends and my fiancé. And they are my players. I just want to discuss it with someone. In case you're not aware, somehow, I'm not gonna creep your history to find out. Or for anyone who happens to visit this thread. RDND. RDM Academy. Ardent Behind the Screen. R Unearthed Arcana. I've been in a really bad place since I moved to grad school. My ex-boyfriend broke up with me just before I moved here and I haven't really had a high self-worth since. So I've been crying a lot and have had some low-key suicidal thoughts. A few of my friends know and they're here for me but my family has no idea that I'm not completely happy. Anyway, I made an appointment to meet with a therapist. I'm finally trying to get help. And I'm really proud of myself for that. I attempted suicide by trying to jump in front of a van. The instant I put my foot up front my mind just switched to autopilot and I just jumped out of the way. I was in shock for a couple of days on the fact that I did attempt suicide. But now I am feeling better. Life's weird man. That I keep a lot of other people's secrets and don't say crap. I'd rather those people handle their business than come to me about it but I guess they know I can be trusted. I actually like it when people tell me their secrets cause it makes me feel that I am trusted too but if I don't think it should be a secret I normally advise them not to tell it to me more about it. 
I'm not particularly good with girls and I moved to a new city earlier this year where my friend introduced me to go a girl. We hit it off and started dating. While due to my aforementioned lack of skills with girls combined with going to a military academy and then a job that traveled all the time it had been around 7 years since I had had a relationship. A few flings here and there but no relationships and to be honest I was starting to feel like I was never going to meet anyone and end up alone. I was am terrified of being that weird uncle to all my friends kids that dies alone. Well the relationship just didn't work. We had fundamental incompatibilities and I wasn't happy. She on the other hand was completely into me and probably would have married me after dating for only a few months had I asked. I ended the relationship. I'm really proud of myself for refusing to settle for a crappy relationship despite wanting someone in my life being one of my biggest desires right now. It wouldn't have been fair to myself and more importantly it wouldn't have been fair to her to simply stay in the relationship waiting for something better to come along. Girlfriend and I finished at the same time the other night. Don't feel like anyone I know is interested but I'm pretty excited about it. That's amazing. I could never imagine that happening with me and my girlfriend. I eat so much faster than her. By the time I'm finished she usually is about halfway through her meal. I have exercised 3450 days in a row without skipping. I am 62 years old and I walk 3-4 miles a day. Or work with my trainer. Or lift weights. I love to be active and I think it keeps me healthy. I have a patient who herniated a disc in his back and is a blacksmith. He has insurance so I have to take it but he has a copay and his wife works but they now have debt from a failed surgery for his condition. He couldn't afford the copay so I went to the gallery where he makes wrought iron art and bought it all so he can afford his copay and to keep his house. I'm sure you're all thinking why not do it pro bono? The insurance world in my state country does not look kindly on not charging copays or denying someone insurance benefits when they pay it. I couldn't find any other way to help this guy without it being enticement to come in for treatment and it was more to keep the stress off of a house payment during the Christmas season. So I paid more for his art than his insurance will ever pay me in hopes that he can keep his house and continue treatment. Either way, I did a good deed, but I can't even tell my wife because I'm not sure she'll be impressed by the sheer amount of money I spent on wrought iron candle holders and lamps that are hidden away in my office. A few things. I really enjoy helping people with computer stuff online. I'm a regular on a certain subs daily questions thread and proud of being able to help. Can't tell anyone in real life because I'd become their go to tech support and frankly, they don't treat me as well as the internet strangers I help. I started doing video game streaming earlier this year. I only really stream one game once per day, anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour or so typically. I started a YouTube channel to back up all my streams. Twitch exports yay. I have next to no followers or subscribers. I forget about followers. 4 subs on YouTube. One of which is my brother, so no reason to be proud there. The real reason I'm so proud of myself is for sticking to it despite my horrible stage fright. Being in front of that camera every day is terrifying. The possibility that any number of people could see me do something stupid or make a mistake is terrifying. But that's really why I do it. Not just to see if it's fun like I told everyone. I wanted to force myself to face my fears every day and I've done it. And I'm still doing it. See you tonight Twitch. I too am proud of my two subscribers on YouTube. I don't want to be big and famous. It's a hobby for video making. But if it can give somebody some enjoyment, that's awesome. Cutting ties with my emotionally manipulative and occasionally violent narcissistic father. Can't talk about it with close family, because my mother is still choosing to live with him. And most family members cannot understand that someone can be so toxic with burst of violence that you can do nothing but completely sever contact. Can't talk about it with friends, because they either take the but it's your family stance, or they feel like I'm trying to throw a pity party for myself when I talk about my childhood. And I'm not much of a reddit poster, although I do lurk on our race at assists. You're taking care of yourself, and that's immensely important. Your well-being and health and sanity are important. Just because you're related to them doesn't mean you have to love them, tolerate them, or interact with them. All it means is that you have some uh, legal and or be genetic tie to them. I'm proud of you for doing what you need to. 3. 
I still collect UGR cards totaling over 750 of the most powerful and rare cards. I estimate the collection to be upwards of $5,000. But I am a collector, and collecting them is my passion. Definitely something that gets the ladies wet. If it doesn't work out with the ladies I have a straight male cousin who'll definitely get wet over that. I have recently learned how to make pretty darn good cannabis butter, and have a decent second income from making medibles. This grandma bakes great cookies that no one I know can sample. Please adopt me. I had 5 miscarriages last year. I am pregnant again but this one is showing a heartbeat. My other pregnancies didn't, but I'm only 9 weeks along. But I am proud I didn't give up. That is so sad I'm sorry you went through that. I hope all is well with your pregnancy. Yesterday I hit 60. No, not 60 years old. The 60th person on Reddit to PM me or reply to me letting me know that something I've shared has stopped them from considering suicide. It's a touchy subject so it's awkward at best in real life. I'd really prefer those I know I will not know my username. Finally, I don't want to come off as a braggart. Though I think this may be the most significant thing I've done with my life I don't know how to discuss it without seeming like I'm bragging. Quite the opposite, I am profoundly humbled by it. Now, to be clear, I don't think that I've actually stopped 60 people. I'm sure some had idle ideation and never would have done it. I'm sure some would have tried once or twice but fail and change their minds without me. As much as it hurts me, I'm sure some meant it at the time they messaged me but have since changed their minds. But equally I'm sure that it's very likely one or more people is alive today because of something I wrote. If even one is alive both my writing and sharing have been justified a thousand times over. I cannot tell you how much that means to me after having gone through the pain of my sister's death to know I might have spared other similar pain. Thank you. You may have helped save my butt over the last couple of years. Thank you. My bad thoughts have subsided considerably and I haven't self-harmed since February. All you nice folks making my eyes pee. That I stopped smoking so much herb. But everyone I know had no idea how much weed I was smoking. Also, I am proud of how well I can fit in while baked as a thanksgiving potato. But of course I can't really be bragging about that to my friends and family. Sometimes I really nail my makeup game that day or I put together an outfit that makes me look super cute. But I can't show off to anyone I know because I'm a guy in my real life. I wake up at 5 every morning, weekday and weekend. I shower, get myself ready, make my kids a complete breakfast including all of the food groups, wake them up, make myself a green smoothie, prepare my water for the day, 80 Oz, take my vitamins, and we go about our day. I can't tell anyone because I'm an butthole for thinking that I'm adulting better than them. TL. DR. I'm adulting and no one cares. I wake up 15 minutes before I have to leave for work. I scramble around like a drunken, blind mole to shower, dress, pack lunch and grab breakfast in that time. Someday I hope to be like you, minus the green smoothie. Not for me, thanks. I journal to myself a lot and write personal stories relating to my life. I like them but wouldn't share them to anyone I know. I started growing herbs so that my uncle with Alzheimer and Parkinson could start doing everyday tasks like holding a cup of water or even to take a shower. I successfully have gone from basically functioning alcoholic to I'll just have a couple drinks and then stop. Basically I have started being able to tell myself that's enough. Now I just catch the start of a buzz, the part I always liked, but now I stop myself from trying to drink more to get that feeling back. I've also gone to bed sober every day this month. It's been a year since the last time I cussed myself, as of a few days ago. I have a massive keloid scar on my left arm from the last time I did it. Anyone who meets me can see it, but I try not to think about that too much. I left the crappy relationship that caused me to break the two years I had clean before then. I'm still building back up to those two years, but I'm in a very solid place now and I'm really proud of that. My mate stupidly took a load of LSD and ended up getting arrested at our house. Whilst he was being detained and escorted to hospital the police took his phone as evidence. With all of the details of people who had taken it with him etc etc. But he asked me to charge it before they took it, so I took it upstairs and drowned the phone in the sink. 
no evidence against anyone, and the police had to let him go because they couldn't prove he wasn't spiked. No one knows, but fairly proud of the quick thinking. Update. There are quite a few more funny details to the story involving what my friend actually did but it wasn't really relevant to the question. If people wanna hear more just let me know. Username checks out. I'm finally out of an abusive relationship and have everything in life going for me currently. I still have feelings for the girl, but I'm much stronger now and won't go back. Surviving my suicide attempt, only my parents know, was the hardest thing to ever do in my life. To tell them hey your son is gonna die soon, let's go to a hospital. After my suicide attempt, getting my crap together socially, psychologically, physically, mentally, all the other lees. Baking some sweet butt pumpkin muffins for myself just a week ago. Giving a homeless man an island 100 euros. The look on his face was an experience I can't describe. Getting 100k gamma score on my xbox after about 7 years. After a year of not talking due to stuff, my crush and I finally talking again, and showing signs of affection, sneaking into the school dance, stealing Joe's blue eyes white dragon in 6th grade cause he was a C, never even played Yu-Gi-Oh, overcoming my ASD and becoming fully realized. Not his blue eyes. Sometimes I feel like I get very little respect at work. I work in a physical therapist offices as the boss's assistant and do front office, back office and everything and anything else including stand in as office manager often. I don't want to brag but it's been 2 years since I've put a needle in my arm. And I feel like if they knew this and the struggles I'd been through, they might not look at me like some punk 27 year old who's got a worry free life. Took a lot of work and help to get here. I've made it 6 and a half years without cutting. My new year's resolution every year is to make it another year without self harm. No one knows I still wrestle with that demon. My amazing blow job skills and performance in bed. In general, my parents always fawn over my sister who is a doctor and a triathlete and I have to stop myself from interrupting and saying things like, I spent an hour and a half sucking a dong last night and made this dude who has never come from a BJ shoot the biggest load I've ever seen. My prayers to your inbox. I worked like a dog for two years straight so my long distance boyfriend and I could have a great first vacation together. It was his first time leaving his home country so I wanted it to be memorable. I saved up enough to pay for the two of us to go to an absolutely incredible 5 star resort in Mexico for a week and then spend another week in Florida. The resort was beyond anything I have ever experienced. And it made me feel even more proud knowing we were the youngest couple there. All the other people that were there, who were all over 40, gave us strange looks probably thinking, how can you afford this? No one knows about my boyfriend so I can't brag to anyone in my family about this so that kinda sucks but not that big of a deal. Those two years of work were worth it though, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Had fricked a chick on the beach on a tropical paradise island about a month or two ago. As I was banging her doggy style while looking over the ocean with the supermoon out, I felt like the master of the universe for a little while. Probably the most glorious moment of 2016 for me. I could almost literally hear the word winning in the back of my head. I successfully lie to every person close to me as a defense mechanism. Nobody who knows me actually knows me. They think I'm bubbly and happy and outgoing. Really I am constantly one bad day away from hanging myself. I drink like a fish, haven't spent an hour sober in the past 2 years and still hold a job up. I'm proud that I can still make people laugh and enjoy my company without dancing around eggshells. I'm proud that nobody will feel responsible when I go because I was always happy with them. 15,000 followers on my dominatrix blog and active in person. Teach kinky classes. Go to dungeons. The whole shebang. Once I wore a dominatrix costume to a Halloween party and everybody laughed because there's no way you could ever do that. You're too innocent. I'm proud that I have been drug free for over 2.5 years. Sadly there is no one I can tell in my life. So I have my quiet pride and my health. Ages ago I saved a tiny kid from getting strangled by a ski lift by jumping after him when he got entangled in it and the mechanism started to pull him and the anchor upwards. Pulled him back down, held the wire with one hand, disentangled him with the other. When done the little sucker just buggered off without saying thanks. 
and nobody saw it. I basically don't tell anyone I know because nobody would believe it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.